I'm just a beaten down horse. You and me both, Leela. The joints just don't joint like they used to. Hello, Internet. I'm Ren, and this is Ren Rants, a channel where I talk about things I care about with a particular focus on pop culture. In this video, we're going to talk about Futurama Season 11, Episode 2, Children of a Lesser Bog. I'll give a couple spoiler-free thoughts about this episode up front before we get into the details, and I will be sure to give you a spoiler warning before we switch gears. Without giving much away, this episode is a follow-up to the 2003 Futurama episode, Kiff Gets Knocked Up a Notch. The setup for this episode is kinda silly, but it gets the job done. There's also a lot of clumsy recapping that wastes a bit of time, but the sweet moments it ultimately helps facilitate are worth it. I'm glad Futurama is already returning to the strong, emotional storytelling that has always defined my favorite episodes. I love when these silly cartoons make me laugh, but I somehow love it even more when they make me cry. So, now we're gonna get into the spoilers, you have been warned. Fry starts the episode sucking on his jacket because it still tastes like honey candy that got stuck to it a thousand years ago. Zoidberg steals all of the flavor, and Bender decides to make more candy to replace it since the candy was discontinued. Amy tries some and loses a couple teeth. It's a lot sticky. And there's something hard in it. She opens her calendar to schedule a dentist appointment and sees a reminder that her and Kif's children will emerge from the swamp soon. For whatever reason, the entire crew has amnesia about Kif's pregnancy and birth, despite all being there to see it. The hell are you talking about? Something to do with the meatbag life cycle? So we get a video to remind the audience of the events of the episode. I do like that the episode actually did air 20 years ago, and they were able to follow it up within that time. In 20 years, they'll sprout legs and crawl back onto land as children. It's cute that the timeline for the revival worked out that way. Amy wasn't ready to be a mom when Kif first gave birth. Set motherhood mode. But she's really excited about it now. Having a family with you is the only thing I want in the whole world. I love this for her. We travel to Kif's homeworld, Amphibios 9. Amy's parents are there, but Kif's are absent this time. We get another appearance of the grand midwife slash wedding officiant slash funeral director. I love her. She is fun every time we see her. I shall be your counsel and guide. I do so out of solemn respect for our traditions and not for any optional cash donation people sometimes place in that basket. The children begin to emerge and are beset by predators, but Amy and Kiff are not allowed to interfere this time. I like that we see some of the same creatures from the original episode. It is one of many little callbacks throughout the episode. Three of the kids make it out of the swamp. The carnage is pretty wild, honestly, but it makes sense since they can't have a character with a small army of children in the main cast. Again. The kids go up to Leela first since she's their biological mother. Oh, they're perfect! Ew, she's touching them. The Wongs are grossed out by the amphibious little guys and get on out of there. Back on Earth, Kif brings the kids by Planet Express for Amy's lunch break, and we get an explanation about their different ages. Question! These three babies are totally different sizes! Question mark. Well, they grew at varying rates depending on the temperature of the water they were in. Leela seems to have double amnesia because she doesn't remember having impregnated Kif. You'd think that would be a pretty memorable occurrence. Why would he look like me? Don't you remember? 20 years ago, you impregnated Kiff. We're reminded how Kiff's species reproduces. I like the old-timey sex ed tape. It's kind of like the sex ed video we saw in I Dated a Robot. We get a cute montage of Kiff and Amy with their kids. Throughout the episode, the grand midwife keeps lurking in the background taking notes on Kiff and Amy. Kiff and Amy seem to be adjusting to parenthood well despite its challenges until Kiff is called away to dupe for a mission. I love you! Amy is having a hard time with the kids by herself. Honestly, that part really hit home for me. My dad was a farmer in Canada, but we had mostly relocated to the US, so he would go back to farm for parts of the spring and fall and most of the summer. So it was just my mom, my brother, and me for a good chunk of the year. And it was really challenging for her. Although, like Kiff, my dad was a stay-at-home dad when he wasn't working, which was really amazing. Kiff misses his family. Amy leaves the kids with Leela so she can take a break, but she struggles with seeing how much the kids seem to prefer spending time with Leela. Leela is exhausted by the children. Amy takes her kids back, but she's not handling her jealousy about Leela's connection with them well at all. Oh, hell no! You're not the mom of them! 
It seems to make Amy feel threatened that they don't share her DNA. Kiff and Zap investigate a research station that has been incommunicado. I love that we see the whale-hating whale biologist from 300 Big Boys again. Bears. I'm a bear biologist. That pays bad. I used to be a whale biologist, but I hate whales. Hate them. Well, then it's good you found an animal you like. Nope, still looking. Now he's a bear-hating bear biologist studying tardigrades, a.k.a. water bears. This bear species is known as tardigrades. It's a fancy word for ugly. Amy calls Kiff crying. He has some reassuring words for her, which is sweet since she actually had to reassure Kiff on her calendar at the start of the episode. Amy, darling, the children love you, and I love you. You're their mother, and you always will be. Nothing can change that. The grand midwife interrupts to tell Amy there's a challenge to her parentage of the children. She must face the challenge or the children will be raised by their real mother. This is inconsistent with what Kif told us in the original episode, though. I thank Leela for the DNA she gave me, but in my species, the true parent is the one who inspired the initial feeling of love. So... Amy should have already been considered the true parent, irrespective of biology, but it's just a nitpick. They clearly just needed an obstacle for Amy to be up against. Although I'd have just taken more scenes with her adjusting to being a parent instead of the whole challenge thing, given the choice. Before the call ends, Kiff promises Amy he's coming home. The bears chase Zap into a cave and Kiff has to rescue him. Kiff is in a hurry to get back to the family, so he plans to just kill the tardigrades till he sees they have babies. So then he just kills the bear biologist instead. There's a really nice moment between Leela and Amy where Leela is really kind and supportive towards her. I'm just proud I helped you become a mom. (laughs) And I like this better than the petty competitive dynamic we've often seen between the two in previous episodes. Those are great shoes. Oh, thank you. Do they come in women's sizes? Amy returns to Amphibios 9 for the challenge. Amy, where is your Smith mail? He isn't with me. Oh, the sorrow. Oh, the shame. She's alone at the start of the ritual, and we get another little callback to the original episode. She is not with me. Oh, the sorrow. Oh, the shame. Kiff makes it just in time. There is a really sweet moment between Amy and the kids before she goes into the hut for the challenge. But whatever happens, you're going to be okay. (laughs) You are too. The challenge turns out to be pretty easy, actually. Do you or do you not love those children? More than I knew I could love anything. Which is all that truly matters. The challenge is over. And we close out the episode with another tender scene between the Croker Wong family. You're my favorite mommy. I liked this episode a lot more than the first one this season. I think a lot of the ways they tried to recap the events of Kif gets knocked up a notch felt a bit clunky. And like the first episode, the inciting setup was a bit weak and pointless, just a real nothing burger. But I will forgive it because the honey candy jokes throughout the episode were kind of funny. Delicious clumps aren't for eating. Mm, mm, mm. They're for manscaping. The scruffy jokes totally worked for me. Plus trace DNA from a certain scruffy. Scruffy stuff gets around. He's one of my favorite side characters. The numerous little connections this episode made to the original 2003 episode made me smile. Just lots of good stuff here. I think Kiff Gets Knocked Up a Notch was ripe for a follow-up, and the emotional moments in Children of a Lesser Bog feel well-earned with how long ago this story was set up and everything we've seen Kiff and Amy go through over the years. The episode's greatest strengths were undeniably in the emotional beats, though, and in the growth we get to see for Amy's character. Futurama tends to be episodic, so there is an element of everything returning to the status quo at the end of most episodes, but over the years, Futurama has incorporated more and more continuity and evolving relationships. So it's nice to see how Kiff and Amy's relationship has progressed. I've always enjoyed them as a couple, and it's wonderful seeing them make a family together. I hope we get to see more of the kids in later episodes. They were a really fun addition. I'd kind of like to see them play off of Dwight and Cubert. I also like the message this episode has in terms of the love a parent can have for a child that isn't theirs biologically. I was initially worried that the challenge might imply otherwise, but the resolution was incredibly wholesome. Although the whole ordeal did seem a little unnecessary and needlessly terrifying for poor Amy, but they don't waste too much of the episode on it. It's mostly just a narrative device to make Amy realize how much she treasures her children. 
if the rest of this season is anywhere close to this level of quality, then I'm so excited because this episode was a lovely step in the right direction. But that's just my opinion. How about yours? Did you like this episode? Let me know what you thought of Children of a Lesser Bog in the comments section down below. Like and subscribe for more videos. See you next time. Peter Zane.